blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Christ is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah.
Benson in Idahosa. He came, he saw, and he conquered. We are just human beings. We live at most 120 years and is gone. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody say hallelujah. I just believe that the most important thing in one's life is to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. You can be a champion in any field. If you miss heaven, you wish you were not born. And so, your greatest opportunity on earth is to know Jesus. The world-renowned singer said in one of Billy Graham's programs, he said, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. And I believe that it is important to have things on earth, but the most important thing is to have him who have everything. And Jesus is the name of the person. Sometimes it is not the devil that puts you where you are, but your lack of knowing whom you are puts you where you are. Did you hear what I'm saying? I said, I wish Jesus just appeared in person. Because all that is most important is Jesus. We are just human beings. We live at most 120 years and is gone. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody say hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I've been blessed since last night. I was telling my executive assistant this morning, I said the message I preached here last night, I woke up since 2.25 this morning and preached it to my people in Africa and to one of our bishops in Tulsa this morning. I just believe that the most important thing in one's life is to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. You can be a champion in any field if you miss heaven, you wish you were not born. And so, your greatest opportunity on earth is to know Jesus. Uh, the world-renowned singer said in one of Billy Graham's program, he said, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. And I believe that it is important to have things on earth but the most important thing is to have him who have everything. And Jesus is the name of the person. I welcome all of you here to the house of the Lord this morning. We are out here to hear what God has for us that can help us be better human beings and live a better life in the world where men and women struggle every day to live, to succeed to live, to achieve something, to live, to become doers and not just hearers only. This afternoon, I'm going to take you through a Bible study, if you like to call it Bible study. But I prefer to teach when I come to a church like Free Gospel like this. Because I believe that faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if you want anything to last in people, plant it as a seed that they will never forget. So turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. I want to deal on an important subject this morning. What I call, I gave it two titles for the person producing the program. The first title of the message is, Light for Your Darkest Hour. How many of you would like to have light in your darkest hour? And you know whom Jesus said he is? He's the light of the world. You need him in your darkest hour. Or what I call my second title, God can relocate you from where the devil put you. If I say this at home, they will shout. I said God can relocate you from where the devil put you. How many of you want to be relocated? You're tired of being in prison. You know what location is? How many of you know location? You know where you live? 
Some of you live in good houses and some of you live in slums. Some of you live in dirty area. Some, when I first came to America for the first time, Bishop, somebody said to me, these are the black people's area. It was very easy to know the way they described it. I see some blocks lifted and put some plank on top of it with roof. They say black people's area. But thank God that God does not look at us the way man look at us. And let me say this before I, I go to the message. Sometimes it is not the devil that put you where you are. But your lack of knowing whom you are put you where you are. Did you hear what I'm saying? Many times, many times, people of my color like this, they say the white man made me what I am. It's not true. It's your brain. It's your brain. My skin is my jaw. I love my color because I know my color. The man who called me gave me my skin and I love my skin. Because the Bible says, God made them in his image and likeness. If nobody like you, you like yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. Just begin to learn how to like yourself. And if you look at the mirror, say, wow, who? Is that me? Oh my God. Made in the image of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Every money. I go to the mirror and say, God, you did something good. <laughs> something good. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I, 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 and then to increase my joy, the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. And I just look at my feet and say, beautiful. Because I preach the gospel, beautiful. It, now you have to learn. Before you ask people to love you, you have to love yourself first. And no man, Brother Mila, no man can demean what Christ has esteemed. If Jesus esteemed you, no man can demean you. But if you look at yourself, oh, I'm a black man, so I'm stupid. It's not because you are black, you are stupid because you want to be stupid. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? I live in Africa. I have staff from nine countries. Nine nations. My staff are from nine nations. Black, white, green, yellow, whatever color you want to call yourself. I thank God I'm not white. I thank God I'm not black. Did you hear what I'm saying? 19. 62, the year you started this, I was weeping in my room. I said, God, why am I black? Look at me. You don't use any black man. And God said, are you black? I said, yes. I didn't know. <laughs> 33 years ago, God said, I didn't know you are black. I said, why? He said, because I never made a black man. Oh God. I said, why did you not make black man? He said, because every man I made, I made in my image and likeness. <laughs> don't let people talk you to senselessness. You don't want to go to school because you are black. You don't want to do a good job because you are black. Get out of where people put you and go to where God sent you. Somebody say hallelujah. Get up and be whom God wants you to be. Get up and be like Jesus. Wake up and be like God. Look at yourself and say I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. I'm a child of God. Everybody say hallelujah. Nobody's like you in this world. You're a special specimen. God doesn't have two people like you. So when somebody look at you and say, you black nigger, say, you, me? You're wrong. <laughs> Tell them they are wrong. And don't behave like what they call you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That your song just now can win world prize. Don't wait for anybody to promote you. Take it everywhere and say, this song can do you good. This song can do you good. 
You know how Muhammad Ali beat every boxer in his time? Yes, he looked at them and said, I'm going to knock you out. You're going down round five. Right. After round three, the people begin to say, one more round before he knocks me out. <laughs> <laughs> one more round. Because he told them, Ali was a prophet of knockout. And you can prophesy to where you are going in this world. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Don't look at yourself and say, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh my. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back here sometime. I'm, I'm going to come back here. I want to come back here. If Jesus give me the time, I'll try to be back here next year. I want to be back here. You know, when you look at yourself, you're looking at God in human form. A doer of impossible things. And you know, when you want to move, when you want to become small, begin to talk to small people. If you want to become great, look for great men and talk with them. If you want to be big, hang around a big man. If you want to be great, stop talking with mean people. Start. Don't. All right. When you come to Africa, you'll be embarrassed to see what God has done. We who, because people told me I was like monkey, I began to look like God. Because I don't want to look like monkey. And as God will have it, the government of my country began to open the door for the Americans to come to Africa and buy all the monkeys. So most of the monkeys in Africa, they are not in America. Did you hear me? My children have never seen snake. They hear of it. They never seen. It. All the snakes have been brought to America. They've gone to England. When people say you are ugly, make yourself beautiful. That's what I'm, that's what I'm after this morning. When they say you are lazy, determined to be strong, and tell yourself not what they say. But what I want to be. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? You just tell yourself. Tell yourself. I will never be what you want me to be. I'm going to be what God says I am. I will teach you a chorus this evening. One of the choruses I composed. It says I am what God says I am. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm on top and not at the bottom. Yes, I'm a conqueror, not defeated. I'm on top and not at the bottom. I am whom God says I am. Somebody say hallelujah. Acts chapter 12. The Bible. Oh Lord. Go ahead. Go ahead. See? Go ahead. Only one thing I have never succeeded to do in my life. One single thing. I've done many things in my life. Only one thing I've never succeeded to do. Point your hand to me and say, what is it? What I refuse to do. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What he to do. Amen. That's the only thing I've never done in my life. Once I say I want to do something, do you know what the Bible says? You are in the image and likeness of God. Do you think Jesus will wake up now in Maryland today, Sunday, and say, I'm not well? You think Jesus will talk like that? Please respond back. You think Jesus will wake up and say, I don't know how I feel? I'm asking you. You think Jesus will wake up and say, Well, the government is shut down, so I'm shut out. You think Jesus will talk like that? Clinton and Dome may be shut down, but Jesus is alive. You know, people come to me, David, they say, I hear so many bad things about happening in Nigeria. I say, you heard from wrong people. If you want good news, see me. I'm the ambassador of good news.
Oh God. Oh Lord. Chapter 12. Everybody say Acts 12. Verse 5. Say it loud. Acts chapter 12. Verse 5. Now say the two together. I didn't hear you. Okay, read it loud. One to go. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. And, but, but, but. Say that everybody, but. Say that everybody, but. For every negative, there's a positive but. Not how you got to prison, but how you are going to get out of prison. The man who sent you to prison is not important, but the man who brings you out is most important. How you fell, Mama Green. How you and I fell is not important, but how we get up is very important. Peter was put in prison, but, oh God, oh Lord, Peter was put in prison, but, but, but what, but what, but what, but what, prayer was made. Somebody shout hallelujah. The key to getting out of prison is not crying in the prison. Did you hear what I'm saying? When you want to get out of prison, you don't cross your feet and begin to, Oh God, oh devil, oh Satan, oh darkness. No, Peter was put in prison. P-U-T, put, but, prayer. Listen to my English. I'm a professor in the university. Prayer was not, prayer was not borrowed. Hear my English. Prayer was not borrowed. Prayer was made. Prayer was made. It's time for you and I to manufacture solution. Don't look for solution. Create a solution. Because if you're looking for a solution, that is the answer somebody has made. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Don't look for a solution. Create a solution. Don't look for remedy. Make a remedy. Say to yourself, I've stayed long enough in prison. It's time to get out from prison. Can anybody say hallelujah? hallelujah. But prayer was made. They didn't look for good Anthony. They didn't look for Sapiro. They didn't look for Cochrane. They didn't look for Dodin. They didn't look for Masha Clark. They didn't look for the, the winning team. They didn't look for the team of fighting lawyers. When they saw Peter in prison, they said, Oh, is that what you did? You killed James. Fine. You killed Stephen. Fine. You now want to kill Peter. No. Every time... Men are tired of problem, they can find solution. The worst thing you can do to yourself as a young man is for you to agree that where they put you in prison is a good place. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I said, did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Press give you wrong figure of how many black young men are in prison, you take it. How many black women are prostitutes, you take it. It's time for you to say, fine, if every black person is in prison, I'm not going. 
<laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? So if they say, 200 black men in prison, say, I'm not there. Are you there? Are you in prison? The problem is not what your neighbors say. It is what you do. When we started our ministry a few years ago, they said, he's going to last for five weeks. That's what they told me 36 years ago. They say it will last for five weeks. Well, take five weeks out of 36 years. You still have 36 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What of those who told me I couldn't? Do you know what they said? They said, he can't make it. And immediately they say, you cannot make it. I say, it's true, I can't. But God can. I can't. I can't. 11 years, I believe what they said. And I was behaving like what they said. When you say they can't, I say I cannot. Why? Because they said so. 25 years ago, God said you can do all things through Christ. I got up one morning, I said, and I am now a possibilitarian. I refuse to be what you call me. I refuse to be whom you say I am. I am whom God says I am. Can somebody say amen? amen? Verse 5. Peter was put in prison. But prayer was made. Prayer was made without season of the church. Unto God for him. Not to the white house. But to the most high. Every time we are in trouble, financially, we are looking for food stamp. Every time you are in trouble, you are looking for green card. Every time you have financial problem, you want to become a Democrat. There's a power bigger than party. And the name of that man is Jesus Christ. Prayer was made by the church. Unto God. Without season for him. Look at verse 6. Read it with me. When Herod would have brought him forth. The same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Look at me, everybody. Remove, raise your head up. Sir, Peter was bound with chain in prison. But Peter's body was in prison. His spirit was not in prison. May I repeat what I'm saying? Peter was in prison, but prison was not in him. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Peter was chained and put in prison. But Peter said, oh my God, I've never had vacation for the last one week. Oh, praise the Lord. You can sleep in your darkest hour. You can sleep in your darkest hour. Peter was not looking for who no Herod. The Bible said Peter was sleeping. But I pray that that day will come when the enemy. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. 
We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. God will do you good. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? When man chain you by hand and feet, you free your spirit. Bishop Green, Peter slept in prison and Peter was sleeping in prison between two soldiers. Soldiers were holding their gun. You can't move. Peter said, I'm moving nowhere. I can hear the soldier say, how are you able to sleep? Peter said, you are the one in prison, not me. You know, Peter have never had the privilege before to be guarded by two soldiers. Oh, you don't know the meaning of that. It's the first time government paid soldiers to guard Peter. He's never had bodyguards. And government gave him two. And now Peter says, okay, if you can guard where I am so I can sleep while you are walking. Do they understand English? You think they are hearing what I'm saying? If I have two bodyguards, there's no need for me to have sleepless nights. You watch over me while I do the sleeping. Okay. Peter, are you not afraid? No. Why? I have bodyguards. He began to sleep. When God saw that Peter was not panicking because of Herod, read me verse 6, loud, clear, and loud, clear, loud, clear, verse 6, one to go. Verse 7. brother say brother stand here stand there hold your gun Peter go and sleeping don't wake up hold your gun do you know keep your job if you move your job. say that Peter you just be dreaming you and Jesus are in conversation. It's well with your soul. It is well with your soul, brother. Keep your guard. Keep your guard. Don't, 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 don't take your eyes from me. That's your job. Now who is in trouble between the three of them? <laughs> the 
the two men. What is Peter doing? I think he's saying, but but Amila, you know the song going. You don't need instrument. Can you just go ahead with your job? Can you just say with me? It is well with my soul. Can you sing it there? It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Where with my soul? Go ahead, Peter. Sleep, sleep, sleep. When God saw that Peter was sleeping and not listening to what Herod was doing, I pray you understand my English. When God looked down, so that we are in trouble guarding Peter. He dispatched his personal, his personal ADC. The angel of the Lord who holds the sword of spirit and power. And said, go to prison. And the angel of the Lord came, bishop, and did this. So just as they guarding, and look at what he did. Everybody shout hallelujah. Listen to what the angel said. Keep your job. Because you think Peter is still there. So keep your job. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Angel came and said, Peter, get up. Rise up. Wherever God meets you that he didn't put you, he will take you out of it. If God is not the one that puts you in prison, and he sees you sleeping in prison, he's going to send his angel to take you out of prison. Somebody say yes. Listen to me, everybody. The first thing the angel did. Verse 7. Read verse 7. Read verse 7. Read verse 7, everybody, quickly. Verse 7. Behold! The angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined. Light shine In the place of your darkest hour, Byron. God never add darkness to our darkness. He takes our darkness. Do your job. Don't move one inch. Stay there. Because you think Peter is still sitting with you. So guard him. He brought light. Which is Christ. The angel said, Peter. What did he say when, he, when light shone? What did he say? And he smote Peter on he the side. He smote him by the side. And raised him up. Raised him up. Arise up quickly. Arise up quickly. And his chain fell off. His chain fell off. If you have any chain in your life, this is the day for your chain to fall off. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Now listen to me. Listen to me. Don't, don't, don't just shout, but hear this. You have to be a believer of what I'm saying now. If you want your chain to fall, you don't sit down in prison. Get up. Everybody get up first. Rise up first. I say rise up first. Why did I ask you to get up? Because there's light coming to you right now. What you are hearing now is light. What is happening now is light. The word of God is light. The word of God is power. Peter. Get up, light shine. Peter, get up. And what did the angel do in verse 8? Listen to what he did. Remain standing, verse 8. 
And the angel said unto him, Guide thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And he did so. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? God doesn't come, Mila, to take what we have. He comes to give us what we own. Anything they took from you in the world, God will put it back to you. God will give you garment to put on. Salvation does not make one naked. Salvation does not make you shoeless. Salvation gives you shoe. Salvation gives you clothes. Salvation makes you beautiful. Somebody say yes! Don't tell me you are dirty because you are a Christian. You are not dirty because you are a Christian. You are Don't tell me because you are a Christian. That's why you have no house. You have no house because you are lazy. Don't tell me you have no car because you are a Christian. You are not having car. Not because you are a Christian. Because you don't want to ride a car. Do your job, Peter. 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 Peter, 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 follow me. Peter got out of prison. Soldiers are still guarding. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Look at the next verse. Verse 9. He went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But though he saw a but thought he saw a vision. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second world, they came unto the iron gate that led into the city, which opened, 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 opened of his own accord. Shout yes. Shout yes. Everybody shout yes. I did hear what God told me. The gate that I cannot open doesn't need to be opened by me. God will open it for me on his own accord. <laughs> Is there anybody here who want God to open their gate for them this morning? Say yes! Say ah! Every gate that you were shut in by the enemy, today every gate shall open in the name of Jesus. Every prison door is open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, tap your leg and say, Yes, Lord. Say, Yes, Lord. You struggled enough. It's time for you to sleep. It's time for you to rest. For God to do your job. Is anybody hearing my prophecy this morning? God knows how much you try to succeed. God knows how much you fought to win. God has asked me to tell you the battle is no more your own, but the loss. The battle is a loss. The battle is a loss. Learn how to rest in restless situation. Learn how to say to yourself, I am no more going to struggle to succeed. I'm going to learn to rest upon the Lord. For they that wait upon the Lord shall... I believe this message is blessing you. 
please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. woke up they didn't know when he put on his shoe brother put your shoe take it off and put it back take your coat and put it back let me demonstrate what i'm talking oh lord oh is anybody hearing what i'm saying this bible must be practicalized don't think of what god said do what god say you do the angels well that's enough that's enough put on your shoe man of Say with me, he put on his shoes. Where were the soldiers? They are still standing. Did they see the angel? Say, no. Put on your coat, man of God. God is not only going to put new shoes on your feet that have no shoe. God is going to put coat on your body that have no coat. Can anybody say Hallelujah. Can everybody say hallelujah? God will not only put shoe to your feet. God will not only put coat to your body. God is going to take you out of the prison. God is going to say this is not the way. This is the way to go. And every chain. <laughs> every chain. Every gate. Every gate. Every gate, every gate, every door that the devil closed, God is going to open the door. Somebody say, yes, Lord. If you want to get out of prison, sleep. If you want to get out of prison, sleep. If you want to go away from prison, sleep. Don't let soldiers It doesn't matter how many soldiers 
It doesn't matter how many soldiers. My God is sending down his angels. They are on their way. They are coming to your prison. They are going to give you shoe. They are going to give you coat. They are going to take you out. on me. The Holy Ghost told me last night. The Holy Ghost told me last night. Divine intervention is coming for you. God is going to supernaturally do for the free gospel church and every member of this ministry a work that no man can claim it. God is going to do something new in the name of Jesus. Oh, your hands down look at me God sent the fourth man to the fire when Shadrach Meshach and Abed Negro were sent to the fire God sent the fourth man Everyone that come before you tomorrow morning, the gates shall open on their own accord. <laughs> Business gates, marriage gates, home gates, employment gates, promotion gates shall open on their own accord. Ministry gates. Ministry gate shall open. Say shall open on their own accord. That's what God told me. That's what God told me. That's what God told me. The gate that the devil shut you in, and he knows. 
You don't have the instrument. You don't have the key. But God is your key. You watch your ministry from today. Drink it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is about to do the unusual in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your home, in everything that concerns you. God is about to do the unusual. Somebody say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That lady that God healed her bone, you have a new feet. Your leg is healed. Everybody, your head is healed. Your eyes are healed. Your mouth is healed. Your belly is healed. Everything about you, God is about. God is about to give you an unusual miracle. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes. Yes. Everybody say hallelujah. Every disease in your body. Every sickness in your body. By the authority in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. From the crown of your head. To the soles of your feet. Be healed in Jesus name. Be loose in Jesus name. Be free in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Open your mouth and say, Thank you, Lord. Open your mouth and say, Thank you, Lord. Raise your hand and say, Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Ewo Media Services. Ewo Media Services, inspirational, world class production. Stretches people. Success strengthens people. Success brings joy. Success brings happiness. So many people want success. So many people have achieved success. Quick riches without maintenance is worse than inherited poverty. Some of you know how to get there, you don't know how to remove it. But how do you maintain success? Is it in the buying of stocks or investing in real estate? To maintain a balanced success, you must try to spread yourself beyond what you have ability to do. Find out from this life-transforming teaching by Archbishop B. A. Idahosa on how to maintain success and you will always be on top in life. I'm speaking on the subject today how to maintain success. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. Have you ever felt like starting over? With Jesus, you can. If you'd like to begin a new life, pray this prayer from your heart. Dear God, you know everything about me. I know I have made mistakes. Please forgive me. Come into my life. Help me to follow you always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, 
I remember traveling with Archbishop Idaosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbenidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the podcast. And the man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 1979. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain 
Uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from, Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We entered a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, he lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were on the, we have lost our way, we would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos, it was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, the house was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, 
uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Morris Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Oh, 
Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, Listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sick. Raise the dead. I said, What? I beg, what did I talk? Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. He hey. said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swimming there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, 
come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in new water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping, and all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> I rather go back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father, Benson Dalsa, is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said 
that the joy that no man can give. That is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa 
was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Daosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'll like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God, the corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938, to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. 
in addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop, or Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries, all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about our Bishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Father Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attracted upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maoris, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop. Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. 
A seminar of affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dowser. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom half bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor Akbar and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church, 
They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blind, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.